Recently, we filmed with Colin Montgomery, widely recognized as one of the most accurate drivers in golf, and he had this advice to give. But it's, yeah, I mean, the finish, the finish was just uh, natural. It just, it just, I wanted to, I wanted to elongate the hitting area. So the flatter I became on the hitting area, the more rounded I became. So I thought, no, no, I wanna, I wanna continue this hitting area and keep this, the club online longer, which meant, of course, I finished high. Thing that's not done now because it's a power game now. Yeah, it's it's yeah, more, yeah. everyone's rounded for more power. Mine wasn't powerful, but it found fairways, you know? It found fairways, which is, hey, they said I was a good iron player. The only reason I was a good iron player was because I was on the fairway to start with. Short of the bunker, so here, I've got to concentrate on my, see, there you go, that's it. It's there, okay? Keep that longer hitting area. I've put myself under pressure here. So extending the impact area, <laughs> what does that actually mean? So your impact, it only lasts for a few milliseconds. But what Colin means is the feeling of that club staying through impact for longer. He wants you to imagine impact of more of a long zone. The feeling is to keep that club face as square to the target for as long as possible coming through that impact area. Even though in reality, that's not exactly what's gonna happen. So Colin believes that this type of approach for modern golfers isn't as popular. And the reason for that is it takes speed out of the swing. Actively guiding that club through impact, it can also cause the arms and the hands to become a little bit more disconnected away from the body, potentially robbing those rotational powers. But when you look at Monty, when you look at his longevity in the game of golf, it's kind of hard to argue with this approach. To practice this, set up a hitting zone. So I've done this with alignment sticks. I'm gonna make sure the ball position is obviously correct for the driver. I'm just gonna practice getting the club head entering this zone, getting pointing down towards the target. So parallel to these alignment sticks and just hold it in that zone for as long as possible. And then it's just a case of rinse, repeat. Now, the reason Colin himself thinks that this approach isn't favored by many modern golfers is that there's so much power to be had from rotation, using the ground correctly, and then just allowing that club to more come along for the ride rather than be a focus of the hands and the arms. So rather than moving the hands outwards, get them entering this hitting zone and staying along it, for as long as possible. What modern golf athletes will do is turn up to the top, big wide body motion, get that club a little bit more shallow. So that club moving in this direction on the downswing, the left arm moving towards the ground as well. You can see here how the club's a little bit more inside the body. To square that club face up, the golfer turns, rotates, see how that club moves from the inside, hits up on the ball, and then the body continues to turn to that full finish. With this type of impact, as the body turns, the hands follow the body around and they actually exit impact a lot lower rather than Collins' approach, which sees that very high finish. The modern swing has a much lower, much more rounded look to it. So to practice this, two alignment sticks, one across the shoulders, one through the belt buckle. Place the ball position where it normally would be in your driver's stance at the front. With the top alignment stick, we want to turn that 90 degrees away from the target, whilst allowing the hips to rotate to about half that amount. On the downswing, we want to be moving our pressure towards the front foot, so it almost feels like we drive down and left, and then we allow the left hip, and you can see via the alignment stick here, to rotate hard. That left leg straightens, and it pulls the whole body along for the ride. And you can just see how much more kind of snap, how much more power is generated through that impact position. You could also imagine how that club coming into impact would just be swept along for the ride. And I know it's very much just anecdotal. We've not got the launch monitor out here, but visually that's just gone further. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you which of these approaches is correct. That's up to you to go away and experiment. But for all the information included in today's video, make sure 
you take a screenshot here. And then also to continue your swing quest and to improve your driving, I recommend these videos here.